Hey guys, we're here at the home of Ashley Renee and she's a sustainable lifestyle and vegan travel expert. She's gonna to talk to us all about how she runs her business from start to finish. She's a powerhouse in the influencer space. So we're gonna learn a few of her secrets and get to know the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur like she is. You ready? Let's go. Hey, Christiana. I'm gonna unlock the door remotely and then you can just come in, okay? All right, thanks. Okay, bye. So good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I oh, know, thank you for coming over. Of course, I'm excited to get started. You ready? I'm excited to show you what I do for a living. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So you ready? Let's go. What is a day in your life like? Walk, walk us through that. Every day is so different. It just depends on what project I'm working on. So let's say that I have to do a photo shoot. So I need to figure out what my concept's gonna be. So usually if it's just me, I'm just the one brainstorming. But if I'm involving my husband, then we'll brainstorm together. And then once we come up with the concept, then it's time to prop it. So I have a giant prop closet and um, an equipment shelf and everything. And so I gather all that stuff together. I lay it all out. I visualize exactly how I want the photo to be. I might draw inspiration from Pinterest or Instagram. And then it's time to set it all up. I could take like, like dozens and dozens of shots before I get the perfect one that I want. Um, once I actually am done with the shoot, then it's time to edit. And the editing process takes quite a bit too. But that's just a photo shoot. You know, I am an Instagrammer, I'm a YouTuber, and I'm a blogger. So I'm what I like to call a triple threat content creator. So for any given project, I might have a photo shoot to do, I might have an entire video to shoot and edit, and then I have to write a blog post for it as well. And so that's pretty much what a day in the life of a lifestyle influencer is like. It's a lot of concepting, it's a lot of shooting, and it's a lot of editing, and a lot of answering emails in between. I, I can't imagine having to do all that you're doing now at the beginning, so yeah, lay that all out for us. In the beginning, usually it's just you with an idea, a crazy one at that, that nobody believes in. And what I wanted to do was definitely kind of out there at the time because, you know, growing up, like I was taught that I was supposed to go to college and then get a full-time job and then climb the corporate ladder. And that was just so ingrained in me that it took me years before I actually had the courage to think about my career path differently. And I felt like in order to be respected, I had to be in corporate America, but that's that's just not the case. That was just, you know, my antiquated way of thinking. And what changed my mind was um, I actually was approached by two friends of mine and they wanted to be entrepreneurs. And they were like, you know, you're just so talented and we want to be entrepreneurs and we can see that you have the potential to be one. Would you like to start a mastermind group? But basically a mastermind group is when you and a group of other like-minded individuals get together and you hold each other accountable on your dreams and your aspirations. And so what really gave me the courage to finally put in that two weeks notice is um, I was pitched to the Travel Channel. I had just started uploading like travel YouTube videos and maybe a few months after that, somebody saw them and was like, we love your stuff. We wanna pitch you to the Travel Channel. And long story short, Travel Channel said, yeah, you know, we really want somebody with TV experience. And I was like, okay, cool. And see, the thing about me is like, when somebody tells me no, I don't necessarily hear no, I hear not right now. So I didn't hear, no, you can't be a travel TV host. I heard, you can't be a travel TV host right now. And maybe not for us, but there's plenty of other fish in the sea or plenty of other networks. There are plenty of other, you know, brands who probably needed video people. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to quit my job because I'm pretty sure if I had the opportunity to work for the travel channel, and even though that didn't, you know, go off, I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there who would want to work for me or work with me. And so I did, I quit like seven months later, I put in my two weeks notice and I left. 
I started my blog in 2013. I didn't quit until 2017. So a lot of people think that, you know, blogging and being a social media influencer is like some overnight success thing. Not at all. It takes a long time to get there. And it's not something that you can just set out to do and then expect to have like a million followers after like a couple months of, you know, putting in the work. It, it takes a lot of time and effort. And you're constantly working on improving your skills. Like I look at my Instagram feed now compared to where it was like back in 2015 when I first got on Instagram. But it took lots of practice. It took lots of, you know, experience working with other influencers and studying other influencers and also learning my own style. So it took a long time for me to develop my own style and really come into my own for me to feel comfortable with what I was doing and who I was as um, an influencer and what I wanted my message to be. Travel was really what motivated me to go down this path to begin with. You know, I studied abroad when I was 20 years old. I went to Egypt and that's the moment I fell in love with travel. I started this blog around the theme of travel, but eventually it just wasn't enough for me. I was like, there's got to be more to what I'm doing than just talking about traveling. And so I don't think that's usually something that you can just come up with on a whim. It ended up being more of a journey for me. Um, and so what happened was I went to Bali in 2015. And it was in that moment that I realized just how much of an effect we have on the planet. And so I found myself becoming very passionate about environmentalism. And so that ended up being the direction that I headed in for my blog. At some point, I realized that I could have an even bigger impact if instead of going to where people already think like me and instead staying in a region where people don't think like me, I could essentially create change and affect change. And so all of a sudden, I found that I was really starting to find my, my voice. And so that's how my blog and my brand just kind of evolved and now I'm a sustainability lifestyle and travel blogger. You know, being an influencer isn't about your photography. It's not about your video skills. It's not about, you know, how awesome your life is. At least for me, like I didn't want to become an influencer for that reason. I didn't want it to be about me. I wanted to have a platform to be able to send a message, to be able to inspire people, to encourage people. And if you think about it, that's a big responsibility to have. What you say, everything that you say and everything that you do can have the potential to affect somebody, to change their life, to change a decision that they might be thinking about. It can literally alter someone's path. And so with that kind of responsibility, like you really have to pay attention to everything you say, everything you do, and you have to approach everything that you create with excellence. And I started getting very real on my platform and using my platform as a way to, to teach people about money. And you know, like, hey, I'm doing pretty well and I wanna show you what I'm doing and be very transparent about my numbers and how I got to where I am today instead of just keeping it all to myself, which is what a lot of people do. And so I thought it'd be a great way to use my platform to you know, deliver a positive message and actually you know, share information that's genuinely valuable to people. It, it encourages me to keep that connection going instead of just trying to be like everybody else. It's what inspires me to stay unique and stay true to myself. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the, the triumphs have been, the, the joys of being an entrepreneur, being your own boss? Has been? It's like the little things, honestly, that I find so much joy in being an entrepreneur. You know, finally getting to the point where people come to me, I think because my, my niche is so specific, I end up getting approached by a lot of brands that align with my message. You know, when you start getting hit up by the brands and the clients that speak to you and really align with what you want to put out there in the world, that's a big win. It shows that people are recognizing you as an expert in something. So thinking about where you are now, just like internalizing that for a second, mm -hmm. what would you, if you could, tell your 2015 self about this journey that you were on? I 
would say don't wait to get started. I think it's very easy to, you know, in the beginning, you're just like, God, there's just so much to do. And I don't want to put anything out there until it's perfect. Don't think like that. Because in the beginning, it's not going to be perfect. And you don't start learning what you need to improve until you just start putting your work out there for people to see. Also, know how to discern good advice from bad advice, because not everybody's going to give you the best advice. I also am about following my heart and my passion, and I knew that if I just kept at this, eventually it would take off. And so even though I have a lot of smart friends and I'm a very smart husband, I chose not to listen to their advice, and I kept going. And a few months later, as a matter of fact, that's when things really started to take off, and I was able to say, ha. <laughs> what kind of advice would you give today's up-and-comer? Um, people who want to either be an influencer or who want to travel for a living, mm -hmm. um, who want to learn how to pitch, like so any kind of piece of what you do, because we know nobody's doing everything you're doing. <laughs> um, what kind of advice would you have for those people? So in the beginning, you're going to do a lot of stuff on your own, and it's going to be cumbersome. You know, when I first started, I was my own advocate for everything. I had to be my own photographer, my own videographer, my own editor, my own accountant. You know, those are just things that you're going to have to learn. Like, you know, I think people sometimes are really afraid to get started because there are so many things that you have to learn in order to be a successful entrepreneur. Do not be afraid to learn what you have to learn in order to be an entrepreneur. Those are all learnable skill sets. Don't ever limit yourself based on what you think you can or cannot do. I think once you figure out who you are and what your voice is, what your unique perspective is on a certain topic, that's when you'll be able to spark conversation. You know, I think all too often you'll see people who are just, they're too scared to have an opinion. Have an opinion. Like talk about what you believe in because that's what's going to invite people to comment. That's what's going to invite people to engage with you. But if you're just putting out generic photos and playing it safe all the time, you're never going to stand out. Like choose you. Be you. Find out what makes you unique and you're going to get that feedback. You're going to get that conversation. All right, so we just got done talking to Ashley. We got to talk about how she got started in her business and the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur. If you have any questions for her or for me, feel free to add them to the comments below and we'll get to them.